I have a new gun and this will look very familiar to you. Um, you may think that you've seen it on my channel before. Well, you haven't. <laughs> what you've seen on my channel before is this gun. This is the Wildcat Mark 1. And um, I actually filmed quite a few videos of this in the early days. Some videos got more than a million views. So it's a very popular gun, a really nice gun. Um, the only reason, I suppose, that I haven't really done that much with the Wildcat is because I've got the impact. And uh, I just like the impact quite a bit more. And it's not to say this is a bad gun. But now that the Wildcat Mark II is out, I think it's about time we actually talk about it and give it some air time because there's really a lot to like about this gun. Um, it's a straightforward bullpup, nothing over complicated about it. It's short, it's light, it's compact, it's efficient. Cocking lever in the front here is amazing and it's really accurate. And I got this one a few days ago and I've already kitted it out properly. Uh, just run through what I've got on here. I've got a Harris Bipod, I've got a Vanguard sling, um, the Wildcat by the way is a really nice gun to sling over your shoulder, uh, I've got a Donny FL silencer on the front, I've got a, an Optizan EVX 4 to 14 first focal plane scope on it with sports match rings and I've got a couple of these uh, magazine holders made by Air Effective Tuning and these things are awesome, I've had these on my Wildcat Mark 1 and I've kind of transferred them over to my Mark 2. So yeah, I'm, I'm really kitted out and, and this setup right over here is a fantastic setup. Now this is not going to be one of those in-depth reviews. I have already done an in-depth review of the Wildcat Mark 1, which you can watch on my channel. I'll put a link down below. But the similarities between these two are just a little bit too close to justify filming an entire new review of the Mark II. But we are going to speak about the differences between these two and hopefully by the end of the video we'll answer the most important question that I've been asked a lot of the time and that is, are the differences between the two enough to justify selling your Mark I and actually spending the money on a Mark II? So watch this through and hopefully by the end of it we'll be able to answer that question. Now before we get down to the nitty gritty, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I do want to clarify something. The Wildcat Mark 1 that I have is one of the earlier versions. I got this about two years ago and I'm mentioning that because FX does have rolling development happening all the time to their product. So as they go through and they discover, I don't know, minor issues or things that could be done better, um, they are constantly refining their product. So that's like machining tolerances or a path that can be made out of a different material, small things like that. Um, so I'm mentioning that because my Wildcat Mark 1 might look a little bit different to yours if you got yours uh, more recently. And so when I talk about the differences between these guns, I'm more specifically talking about the differences between the early Wildcat and the Mark 2. And if you've bought a, a, a Mark 1 recently, more recently than I've bought this, then your Mark 1 actually might be closer to this or somewhere between these two. So I just wanted to clarify that. So let's compare, shall we? Okay, well the Wildcat Mark 1 has a plastic trigger guard while the Wildcat Mark 2 has a metal trigger guard. So a slight upgrade there. If you take the cheek piece off, you'll see that the breech blocks look a little bit different. The internal parts do differ a little bit. The piece that cycles the magazine doesn't scratch the anodizing off the magazine like the Mark 1 did. And I have heard reports that the Mark II has an upgraded valve system. I can't test this for myself because I've filled with the power settings on both guns, but I'll point you to some other reviews in the video description below so you can hear what other guys have to say. Power can be adjusted, you just turn a brass screw behind the breech block to change hammer spring preload, but be careful because you can only adjust within the limitations of the factory regulator pressure. And if you turn the power too high, you will lose accuracy, so you've been warned. And if you do change the hammer spring preload, I would also highly recommend putting a little bit of Loctite around those threads after you've done it. Otherwise, after a while, that might wiggle loose and you might see the power drop or rise again. So that's another little tip from Matt Dubber for the day. If you take the stock off to kind of reveal the, the guts of the gun, so to speak, you'll notice that the trigger linkage on the Mark II has been beefed up quite significantly. I think one of the biggest gripes that people have with many bullpups is that the trigger can be quite mushy and that's because of that trigger linkage. The Wildcat Mark 1 was already pretty good in this department but the Mark 2 is definitely a little bit better. As far as the quality of the trigger pull on bullpups and rifles go, 
the gap has definitely been narrowed down to almost nothing, at least for FX. And now for the big news, the main news, the main reason why the Mark II has been called the Mark II and not just a continuation of the Mark I, and that is the inclusion of the X-Barrel system. If you look at the breech blocks between these two guns, you'll notice almost immediately that the breech block on the Mark II is a little bit longer than the breech block on the Mark I. There's a little piece that protrudes out there, and that is to house the, the X-Barrel system properly. Well, if you look at the Mark I, what you'll see is a barrel that is pretty much fixed in place. This barrel is not made to be removed, and even the shroud has been kind of loctited on so that you can't easily take it off. Now, the barrel that's on this gun is the original smooth twist barrel. In other words, it's a smooth tube, smooth steel tube all the way along, except for the last centimeter of the barrel, which has been pressed from the outside into a pentagonal shape, like a poly polygonal barrel. Now, what's special about this is that uh, the pellet is allowed to accelerate all the way to the end and when it engages that rifling it just puts a little bit of a spin on it and when it does this it doesn't scar up the pellet at all because there's no tooling that ever touches the inside of these barrels that's what makes these so unique so that pellet is very very smooth on the outside and because of that the first thing that happens is it doesn't catch the air the the oncoming air as much or the, the air from the side so there's less magnus forces on the pellet We'll learn about those in my upcoming Ballistics 101 videos when we get to that. But there's less Magnus forces on the pellet, so there's less to throw it off and make it destabilize. The end result is long range accuracy. These guns are known to shoot well at long range. Now, the new X barrel system is very similar in many ways. In fact, it's almost exactly the same in the Wildcat. Um, the Wildcat, if you remove the shroud, what you'll find is a barrel that looks almost exactly the same. We've got a smooth inside all the way till the last few centimeters, and the last few centimeters have a little bit of a twist on them. The difference is that the liner, or the actual rifled part of this barrel, can be removed. So if you take a 10 millimeter uh, spanner, and you take this little steel part of the end of the barrel, you can actually pull out the liner, and I'll show you what the liner looks like. It looks like this and you can replace it with a different liner. So the liner that comes standard with the Wildcat Mark II is the smooth twist liner. So it's exactly the same as the barrel that's on the Wildcat Mark I. So in theory, the accuracy of these two guns should be pretty much exactly the same. I do hear rumor, well, it's not a rumor, it's, it's something that was told to me by FX, um, and they were telling me that the accuracy that they were getting out of the smooth twist liner was slightly, slightly better then out of the smooth twist barrel. Um, so maybe the process is a little bit more accurate with these, um, but the accuracy is gonna be almost exactly the same. So I, I will put in a little insert here so you can see these last few centimeters that have the rifling part pressed into them. But as I mentioned, the, the special thing about this is that you can actually change the liner. So if in theory you wanted to take a smooth twist X liner, which is same process of rifling being pressed from the outside but along the entire length of the barrel then you can do that the advantage of having the x barrel liner over the smooth twist liner is that this the smooth twist liner because it only has rifling on the very end there is a limit to the twist rate that you can put on this if you make the twist too fast the pellet won't grip properly and it'll actually strip the lead which is not good so the smooth twist x liner you can have a slightly faster twist rate and it's a little bit more forgiving so if you want to put a smooth twist x liner in here you can shoot a wider variety of pellets at a, at a wider variety of powers and they're not going to lose stability or be inaccurate if you're shooting standard jsbs then the standard smooth twist liner is going to shoot perfectly fine probably almost as good as the x liner or just as good but um, if you want to shoot something a little bit different or let's say you want to shoot some light slugs out of your wildcat then you can simply swap this out for a smooth twist X liner, which is actually what I've done in this gun, and it'll allow you to diversify your projectiles a little bit. I'm not gonna do an accuracy test. I think there's just too many accuracy tests out there already. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna link 
a video down in the video description of Steve Shelley of Air Gun Exploration and Advancement Channel who's already done an accuracy test at 50 and 100 yards with the Smooth Twist X barrel liner and the Smooth Twist barrel liner and you can compare the, the accuracy between the two barrels and see how they do at long range. So to bring this one into land, let's ask the big question, what's the big deal? If the Mark II has the Smooth Twist liner in it, which is essentially the same as the original Smooth Twist barrel in the Mark I, is there really a point upgrading? Um, I'm going to answer that question and say, if you're planning to shoot standard JSB pellets at standard speeds, which I think is 90% of you out there, then no, there isn't really a point upgrading to this if you already have a Wildcat Mark I. That being said though, if you haven't got a PCP yet, this is a really nice option and I would recommend this higher than I would have recommended the Mark I in its time, simply because I think uh, the diversity of being able to have the Smooth Twist X system in here and let's say for example in a year or two's time a new pellet comes out that outshoots the JSB or JSB itself releases a pellet that's a slightly different shape and the standard Smooth Twist liner doesn't shoot that well then you can at least switch out the liner put in an X barrel and you'll be able to shoot those pellets well or even buy a maybe a liner that's designed to shoot them without having to replace your whole gun so that's the big advantage of this and that's probably the main reason I would recommend this gun over the Mark 1. The other things like the trigger guard and the, the trigger linkage and those are all minor things. But the x barrel system I think is just the next progression and the evolution of what FX is bringing to the table in terms of air gun technology. And I really think it's technology that's going to go a really long way in advancing our sport and just taking the consumer product, the normal guys like you and me who um, love to go out and hunt it'll take this to the next level and allow us to just do our job a little bit better so I'm really excited about that and I'm really enjoying this gun so far and that's where we're gonna bring this one to a close but if you're not already subscribed to this channel make sure you do that make sure you've got that notification bell on because I've got some really cool stuff coming up I've got a few hunting videos with this gun the Wildcat Mark II I put that rust bear scope cam on so you can see me shooting through that and that came out quite nicely and I've also got some really cool news coming up with the Smooth Twist X barrel liners that I've been working on for Nielsen slugs, for shooting slugs. Um, I really think those are also going to kind of take our sport to another level. And I'm really excited to not only introduce that to you as the barrels start to become available, but to also maybe talk you through how to set your impact up to shoot those slugs well with that barrel. Um, yeah, for long range shooting, I think it might make quite a big difference. So stay in touch with me in terms of that uh, i'll definitely be updating you and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time